Hi guys, welcome back to the Coffee Break Podcast. I am your host, Emily Lung, a podcast all about college stories, fitness, entrepreneurship, and much, much more. If you're new here, hello, and welcome to episode three. So much is in store. So much of my life is in store, but let me just give you a little life update. Still with the shelter in place order, obviously I've just been at home and I'm starting to go a little stir crazy, but I'm trying to find things that keep me busy and honestly healthy. The weather has low-key been real crazy. So last podcast I told y'all it was like raining one day and this week it's like dropping to the 40s and then some days it's like high 80s. So like I don't get it. I can't keep up. Today it was cold. So I haven't been doing my outside workouts as much, so my indoor workouts have been like a little lame until now. So the Peloton app is free, I believe till July 8th, don't quote me on it, but they have literally workouts like boot camp, strengthening, and like things you can do without like a Peloton machine, like without a bike or a treadmill or any of the Peloton equipment. You just need like a set of dumbbells or a resistance band. And there's like even yoga classes, meditation and things that you don't even need equipment. And I've been taking their classes and they are killer. I did a boot camp with Trey the other day. And then yesterday I did a dumbbell only full body workout and it was a 30 minute workout and it kicked my butt. They have workouts as short as 20 minutes all the way up to like 60 minutes and it's bomb. And this is not an ad. I'm just telling you how much I love the Peloton app. So if you're having a struggle like getting your fitness in, I know we talked about fitness a lot in the last podcast or the last episode, I highly recommend checking out the Peloton app. So yes, high key recommend. Speaking about that, I actually ordered a spin bike. It got here today. I got an Echelon way cheaper than a Peloton. I want a Peloton one day, but that's just such a huge investment. And financially, Emily is not there. I cannot go drop $2,000 on a bike. My family would judge me. My boyfriend would judge me, but I don't think my friends would low key. So, hey friends, y'all are the real ones. But I got an Echelon, which is basically just like a Peloton bike. It looks just like it. It's freaking heavy. It just doesn't have the screen. It has an iPad like stand for it. So I've been using the Peloton app with my iPad stand like on the bike. Does that even make sense? If you follow me on Instagram, you saw I posted like the whole thing and I live streamed like the setup. It was super fun. So selfless promo follow me on the gram and follow the coffee break on Instagram. Hello. I didn't even say that in the intro and I always say it. So yes, me and the coffee break. Anyways, back to my bike. It got delivered today via FedEx. So shout out to all the essential workers because thank you. So it took me about an hour to like fully set it up, got it set up, took a 30 minute hip hop spin class on the Peloton app and it was bomb and I literally died. I also remembered I was going to stop trying to say the word like and here we are like you know what three minutes into the episode and I've said it so many times so my apologies but anyways yes the bike is so freaking amazing. I've been wanting one for so long. I actually had to order the um, additional pedals because the pedals that comes with are the cage pedals and if you spin then you know you like to clip in your shoes and I have SPD clip shoes So I ordered the SPD pedal add-ons. They should be here soon. So one side will be cage so Trey can ride. And then one side will be the SPD so I can use my spin shoes. I'm so pumped. I'm already scheduled like some of the live stream Peloton classes and scheduled some future ones that I want to take because you can like like classes that intrigue you. So I think tomorrow I'm going to try a 30-minute spin class and then back it up with a 20-minute arms like total arm burn workout thing and then follow it with a 10 minute stretch class. I know that's a lot. It's like an hour, I think, right? 30, 20, 10. Yeah. Anyways, so that will be cool. That's my little update about the bike. I'm just so excited. If you follow me on Instagram, you already know. So super, super hyped about my spin bike. It's all I've been doing and thinking about all freaking day. I got it for a really good price on walmart.com. So if you're looking for a spin bike, they're literally sold out everywhere and like Peloton and Nordatrack and everywhere else has like these three week delays because everyone's ordering them because we're all, you know, in quarantine. But Walmart, heck yeah, shout out to Walmart because it got here in like four days. So, and they have a really good selection, faux cheap, great quality, but read the reviews. Okay, rant over. 
So for today's episode, I want to talk all things cheerleading from my past because my biggest question on Instagram and things in general are always like, how'd you get into fitness? Why are you so into fitness? Like, meh. Well, one, it's my job. And two, it's everything I know. It's my whole life. So I kind of want to give you guys like a backstory on that because I feel like that gave me a lot of who I am today. And I grow, I grow, I grew as a person a lot through cheerleading and my, I don't even know how many years of cheerleading. So that's why I kind of want to give you a backstory on that. But I thought it'd be fun to do a cheerleading this or that. So I found this really fun cheerleading this or that list on it's Pinterest and so I thought it'd be fun to pick 10 of those and answer them before we get into my little cheer history so then you just kind of know where I'm coming from so we're gonna play a mini game today and if you don't know cheerleading I am sorry about this episode but I have a good amount of cheer friends and peeps so this one's for y'all today first question would you rather be last pass or center flyer Well, coming from someone who was a base and all-star cheer, I'm going to choose last pass. I, one, don't want to be a flyer ever. I know people are always like, yeah, whatever. You would so want to be a flyer. (laughs) Like, people always want to be the flyer. No, like, I love being ground bound. I love being the strong gal at the bottom. So, I'm going to go with last pass. When you're just a good tumbler, like, you're a badass. Like, being last pass is the best, most rewarding, just knowing you're that good. Anyways, moving on. Would you rather win Worlds or win NCA? Well, not to toot my own horn, but I've won both. And I have to choose Worlds because winning NCA is great. And I don't want to down NCA at all. But And I don't want to sound cocky or unappreciative because I don't want this to come off the wrong way. But I've won NCA seven times and I've won at Worlds once. And the work effort it takes to win both is very equal but the chance of winning worlds versus nca is a big difference and i just feel like not that winning nca is any easier but there's more of a division split and there's less countries there in a sense at least in the division i won worlds in it was a lot harder to win worlds and i don't know i just think worlds for sure. I'd much rather have seven Worlds rings and seven NCA jackets. So, Worlds. The next one I feel like is a no-brainer. Would you rather get disqualified or come in dead last? Dead last. Do not disqualify me. You will literally have that on you forever. So, no. I Give me dead last. And it's happened before, so I know what it feels like. <laughs> Would you rather win NCA? but bomb every small competition or bomb NCA and win every small competition. (laughs) Win NCA and bomb all the small ones. I've had a season like that. I ain't gonna lie. Would you rather go to a big powerhouse gym or a small talented gym? I've actually done both. Ooh, that's hard. That's hard. A big powerhouse, like I'm assuming a big gym, like a D1. Or a small, talented gym? They both sound pretty talented. I don't know. I guess a small, talented gym, if, like, everyone there is talented with you? That's a tricky one. Would you rather be really close team... Would you rather be a really close team that loves each other but sucks or a talented team that doesn't bond at all? Well, let me just tell you from experience. If you are not like family, like if you're not bonded, you're not winning anyways. So I'm going to choose the close team that loves each other because the team I won worlds with and the teams that have won NCA with are tight like a family. Like there's a bond. You don't win with a team that you don't have a bond with. So I don't believe in that question. Sorry. Okay. Would you rather be an amazing cheerleader on an average team or an average cheerleader on an amazing team? I feel like I'm pretty average, so I'm going to go with average on an amazing team because I'm very average. At least I think I'm average. I don't know. I don't know. Would you rather compete in large co-ed or small all-girl? Ooh. Hmm. I'm going to go small all-girl because I'm a stunt gal, so small all-girl. Would you rather do all-star or high school slash college cheer? 
all-star. What kind of freaking question is that? No. Would you rather have multiple people lose shoes or drop half of the pyramid? Oh, that's a good one. Hmm. I'm going to say have multiple people lose their shoes. <laughs> I ain't dropping that pyramid. Would you rather be center jumper or center dancer? Oh, come on. Center dancer. What the heck? I hate jumps. Who actually likes jumps? Would you rather be on Shooting Stars, Senior Elite, or F5? F5 or die. And don't comment me for it because I know that's the unpopular opinion. Would you rather have straight or curled hair for competition? Straight hair. What the heck? I hate curling my hair. So, but I'm going to end on that one because the other ones, this is a long list. So we're going to stop there. I hope they gave you a little insight if you're, you know, in the cheer realm of what those answers even mean. So if you've ever thought about making a podcast, there's no better time than now. Buzzsprout has all the resources you need to help you grow and make a successful podcast. If you follow the link down in the description below and let Buzzsprout know the coffee break sent you, you'll receive a $20 Amazon gift card when you sign up for a paid plan on Buzzsprout and it helps support the coffee break. So obviously getting into my cheer story could probably be four episodes in their own because my cheer story is quite eventful, but I'm going to give you a little rundown. I'm going to tell you some fun stories through my experience of cheerleading and hope it's just some great entertainment and helps you understand me a little bit better. So for starters, I started cheerleading when I was like 10 or 11, which is like a late bloomer now. Like if you start at 10 or 11, like you're you're late to the party. Like you can catch up, but (laughs) these kids are starting now and they're like four on show team. Like I didn't even start tumbling until I was like 11 or 12 or 10 or 11 or whatever I just said. I started all-star cheer so, so late. I started in a gymnastics gym in South Austin and it was obviously mainly gymnastics. So the cheer program wasn't like all that. I was the only girl on the team with a back handspring I had been doing tumbling classes there, and we were a hot mess. I look back at those videos like, mother, how could you ever let me do that? How embarrassing. But it was still growing. Like, the industry was still, like, becoming a thing. So that's where I started. And then from there, I went to a gym called Central Cheer out in San Marcos. Then it was bought out, and the name was changed, and then it had a couple name changes. But anyways, I went to Central Cheer out of San Marcos, Texas, like I said, and that's where, like, I really grew my passion for cheerleading, and I realized, wow, like, this is, like, a thing, and the industry had grown a lot more at the time, like, there was actually levels instead of being, like, intermediate and novice and had all these crazy names, so I was on a level three and a level four. I was double teaming, and I think I was, like, in middle school at the time, and it was really fun, I made a lot of good friends. A lot of them I still, like, talk to. My mom has, like, cheer mom friends from that gym that she still talks to. Like, we're talking years ago. And this being, like, my first, like, real take at All-Star Cheer. Like, the blingy crop tops. And that was really cool. I wonder if I can find, like, a clip. I still have videos from Central Cheer. Like, little VHS. Not VHS. but Not that old. But, like, CD videos from there. I wonder if I can find them and put them on the Coffee Break Instagram. I'll try. It'll be a lot of work, but I'm going to try. I know I have them somewhere, but that was so much fun. And from there, when I started getting very serious about it, I went to a new gym. One, the drive was really far from where I was living. And I say that now, but just wait, cause it gets worse. So I was driving like 30, 40 ish minutes to go to that gym. Cause it was almost basically in Seguin. If you live in the Austin or like no Texas small towns, like I think the gym was like basically in Seguin. And I lived in Austin. So it was quite a commute to go to Central Cheer, especially right after school. So from there, I switched to another small gym called TECC. And it's no longer around either because I'm old and times have changed. So I went to TECC for a really long time. I actually had an amazing start. Still have friends from that gym as well. And really grew my tumbling and my stunting. And that's when I got like really good. At least I thought I was really good. Um, I dealt with a really bad abusive coach at that gym. Obviously not going to drop names, but if you've been there, you probably know, but a very, very abusive, um, verbally abusive coach. And it kind of like changed the game. I was like, oh, okay. Like, are we good? Because 
I'm terrified of you or are we like actually good? I don't really know. So I actually ended up tearing my ACL at a competition that we were competing at and it was really, really bad. Actually, it was my ACL, my meniscus and my PCL. Blew it all out at a competition. We were in Dallas and we were in the warm-up floor, I had to throw my full one last time. I just wasn't feeling it, which is the worst. Never do that. I don't highly, I highly recommend not doing that. So I threw my full one last time. We were about to compete. Boom. Blows out my knee. Done zone. So we get back to Austin and mind you, this is my second knee injury at the time. I hadn't had surgery the first time. Um, I didn't need it. It was just like a hyper, not hyper, yeah, kind of like hyper extended. It just like stretched the ligaments really far. So yeah, update. I've had bad knees. So when I blew this all out, I ended up getting knee surgery. Obviously was out for like almost eight months. And well, when I came back, it was very different. I also had gone to Worlds with this gym. My first time ever going to Worlds back in 2009 for a hip hop dance team. So I'd been a part of this program for a while. I was very invested. I was on all of the highest levels. I was on their like first level five team, their first Worlds team. Like I was... I grew up in this gym, I felt like, at least for like my high school, no, not my high school, like middle school into high school years. I really grew up in this gym for a couple seasons. Well, when I came back from my surgery, it was very different and the abusiveness was worse because I wasn't good anymore. I just came back from an ACL injury and it was a really bad falling out and it was very sad because I felt like I was leaving my friends, which ended up following me to my new gym, but I just, it just wasn't for me at that time. And after hard conversations, if you've been in a youth sport that you're very attached to, you understand leaving a program is very, very difficult and it's very hard on the heart. And although it was obviously I needed to get out because of that one coach, I I knew it was going to be hard because of my, the family I've built there. So from there, I went to a gym called ACF. Austin Cheer Factory. And if you live in Austin, you know that is like the best of the best, the OG. Shout out to JM, the best coach that ever was in Austin. He built me into the athlete I am. He built a lot of people into the athlete they are. A lot of people respect him and continue to respect him. And I love that man. He really took me under my wing when I left the other program and taught me tumbling from the ground up like re-taught me a round off because my tumbling was so trash and I got really good like I got really good there like I was at my peak I was on his large senior four one season and then I did restricted five which is now like just level five but I was on restricted five and then I was on a small co-ed five a world's team there and I, I just look back and I'm like, wow, like those were the times. And I still have a ton of friends, like really good friends from that program because that gym was real family. And when I was at TCC, I thought I knew what family was. And then I went to ACF and I learned what a real family was. And let me just say my life was forever changed. And then I tore my ACL again. So I had to wear my ACL brace for a while And then I was finally allowed to take it off, but I didn't. I wore it a little bit longer, which apparently you're not supposed to do. I don't really know. Um, So I took it off and I started getting back into tumbling without the brace. And then I tore it again doing a toe touch, guys. A toe touch. A toe touch back to be exact. So I at least was flipping out of it. But I guess I didn't snap my ankles together enough or something. I blew it out again. And here we are back at ground zero. And I ended up coming back later that season. I didn't tumble that season. That's when I was on the restricted five and the co-ed five. And I was really there to stunt, jump, no flipping. I think towards the end of the season, I started flipping a little bit, but I was just being very cautious. I had gained a ton of weight because we're now talking a second surgery. And yeah, like obviously after the first one, I gained some weight, but after the second one, it was a harder recovery because it was so soon to the previous surgery and it just wasn't pretty. So then I gained a lot of weight and I finished out the season as a stunner. We didn't go to Worlds that year because it was just a rough season as a whole with injuries and things like that. So from there I took a break and I was just a college girl. I was going to Texas State. I did not cheer in college because I 
didn't really have the skills anymore. So I started going back to ACF to do open gyms and just tumble for fun and see my friends that were like still like age eligible. And I actually ended up filling in because I was age eligible my freshman year of college, like super senioring and filling in for a couple of competitions. So I got my tumbling back and things like that. And somehow, so this girl that I was on team with at ACF ended up driving up to Plano and she was on cheetahs. So her mom and my mom were talking and I'd always wanted to do an international team, but ACF obviously didn't have an international team. So I was like, is it crazy for me to even think about driving to Plano? You know, like, is that crazy? And side note, Plano is three and a half hours from where I live. So I would be driving three and a half hours one way and three and a half hours back from practice. So my mom and I ended up going up with them one weekend and I reached out to the coach was like, Hey, I'm coming up. I'm from Austin. Like, I don't know if y'all even need people. So he's like, well, come try out a practice. So I did the practice and then they were like, well, if you want to do the team, like you have the spot, like you're good to go, you know? So I ended up doing the team. I was on cheer athletics, lady cats, international open six, which would now be International Open 7 with all like the division name changes. But I did that for two years. And let me remind you, two years of driving three and a half hours, one way there, one way back, and I was still attending Texas State. And Worlds 2013 was rough and my mom didn't get to go see me. And she hadn't seen me compete at Worlds since 09 actually at DCC. So it was just like hard one losing after let me just go back they wanted a two we did so good we were in first place we had some issues in finals and ended up getting fifth and it was just hard because we'd worked so hard and it was just rough it just wasn't a good ending to being on my dream team like I never thought in a million years I'd be a part of cheer athletics and so when I was a part of cheer athletics I didn't expect to win worlds like by any means like that wasn't it And we didn't win NCA that year. And it just was like a rough way of coming back into cheerleading. But it was also very fun and very rewarding. And I met my best friend Allison through there. And so many of those teammates I still talk to to this day. And after Worlds 2013, like I was done. I was ready to retire from cheerleading. I thought this was my sign. (laughs) Like, girl, you're old. So I was done at this point. Tryouts had passed. I didn't retry out. Like, I was done. And then midway through the summer, I realized how much I actually missed it. I reached out to my friend, Allison. She was like, girl, come do it. So I reached out to my coach from the previous year and was like, hey, you got a spot for you, girl. And he was like, you can come and fight for a spot. So I drove my happy booty up to practice. I practiced and I literally fought for a spot and didn't know I was on the team until choreography, until I was choreographed into that routine. I ended up doing it. And then Allison and I actually realized, actually, we realized the first season how close we lived. So we started carpooling because obviously my friend that was on Cheetahs was at different practice time. So the carpool didn't work out. So I was driving myself for like probably four weeks of that first season. And then me and Allison realized like, wait, we live 40 minutes from each other. What are we doing? So started carpooling with Allison. So fun fact, I know I backtracked a little. So in my 2013-2014 season... We won NCA. It was great. But that team was just so much more bonded than the first team. And it was a lot of the same girls. Like, don't get me wrong. But we just, like, grown together at that point. And 2014 was, like, the season of my dreams. Like, think of having the best season of your life times 10. That was my last year on Lady Cats. I can't. And I think that's why I never cheered again. (laughs) This sounds so dramatic. Because I could never top the season we had. You'll never beat all of those girls on that floor. And those girls are like my sisters. We literally had a Zoom happy hour um, last week. And it's been, what, six years now since we've won Worlds? No. Yeah. Six years since we won Worlds. We won Worlds in 2014. And it's like we never stopped. Like seeing all of them on Zoom was just like there's a reason we won. We were so tight. They're literally my sisters and I would never change it for the world. So that is kind of like the brief overlay of 
my cheerleading career, the ups, the downs. I mean, I didn't go like full in depth, but that is that that's my cheerleading story as a whole. (laughs) And that's like me as an athlete as a whole. So I had actually started coaching like tumbling at a small gymnastics gym when I was on Lady Cats. And that was so much fun. I remember loving that. And from there, I was like, you know what? Like, I love cheerleading. Like, I want to coach all-star. So I applied for this position at this small all-star gym, like really close to my house. Ended up getting it like the job on the spot. They love me. They love my background. And obviously, like having cheerleadics to my name was like a big like help because, you know, Cheerletics is a very known program. So anyways, so I get the job and the rest is history. I coached at the gym for like six years and, you know, that's where I got into choreography and like really grew as a coach. Um, then I coached at Stars Vipers and then now I coach at Tumble Tech. So that is my life as a whole. Cheerleading has been a big part of my life growing up and now as my career and I wouldn't change it for anything because it it grows you into a person. And those that have done it, you get it. You know it. And those of you that haven't been a part of it, like, it's just like any other youth sport. It's just, I don't know how to explain it. It's so weird. So if you love basketball and you grew up doing basketball, like, you're going to say basketball made you who you are. Like, those coaches, like, formed you into the person you are and, you know, taught you a lot of things about discipline and respect and commitment and you know, being determined. And that's like what cheerleading did for me. And it really built a strong community of people that I can go to and best friends that will be in my wedding one day, thanks to cheerleading. And I just really, really, really love cheerleading. So I wanted to do a quick little episode on this and kind of just share that with you guys, because I feel like a lot of you might be interested. A lot of you might not. I don't know. I hope this was enjoyable. But thank you guys for making it to the end of this episode. If you did, please rate and comment. The podcast really helps me get noticed and share it to your friends. I'll let them know. Go listen to The Coffee Break and make sure to follow me on Instagram at, at the coffee break dot podcast. And I will see you. No, I won't. I don't want to say see you. I'm not going to see you. But we'll talk same place, same time next week. Toodles!